Hello everyone, it's Amy and welcome back for week 26 of the new Build Your Stash and Craft. Today we are going to make a book Rolodex. And so what we needed for this week was we needed one book. Um, I said just get one from the Dollar Tree, but um, mine is from a second hand store. And then a package of stickers and a package of rub-ons. Just anything to decorate our book with. So I have already taken the book out of its cover because... It takes a little while to do the first step of this project. And this is what the first step looks like. We are gonna fold all of the pages in half and it's gonna make a Rolodex. Now, when you're done with this, you can either leave it sit flat like this on your desk or table, or you can fold it at an angle so that it sits like this. It takes up less room when you're looking at it, you have a nice spot here that's decorated and your flat spot that's decorated. And it makes these pages just a little bit tighter. So, but um, the way that you do the folding is very simple. You fold the pages in half. So I already did this and I will tell you it took me a half an hour and that is 230 pages. So that would be 115 folds because the pages are numbered on both sides so um and I just start at one side start at the very beginning now I did leave the the whatever this is the whatever it is I left that on there and I left this per first page because it was glued to that um and because I like the color of that better than I like the color of this gold I don't really care for that too much and then I literally just took the first page and folded it in half. Took the second page and folded it in half. It gets tighter and tighter as you go. Um, you just want to finger press them. You don't need to use a bone folder and make them super, super tight um, because you want them to have a little resistance to each other to hold whatever it is that you're going to slide into there um, to hold, you know. So, so don't make it super tight. I've done that before and it was a little disappointing, although, this is how everyone makes the Rolodex like this. Well, I did that and I pressed them so tight that by the time it was done, the pages only filled up this much in any kind of a, a tight manner. I mean, they were like really gapped apart because I made it so tight. But that is how I figured out that I could do it this way. And I like this way because it, like I said, it takes up less room and I just like the way that it works. So, but still you don't want to, you don't need to use a bone folder. So basically I have just a few pages left. And so what I do, especially as you get down towards the end, you can't really see the middle. So I just take my page and I start folding it. And what I do is I take this little, this corner of the page and I kind of slide it down where I can see it until I get to where I know kind of the bottom is. And then I slide it back over to make sure that it's in line with the other pages. And then I just give it a press. So, and that way it's just, I know that I'm pretty much there. I know that I'm pretty much, and again, I leave this out here just a little bit so that I can see it pretty much at the bottom. So I'm gonna line it back up with the side over here. That means it will be lined up with the side over there. And you know, you're going to have some that are a little taller, some that might have a little edge sticking out. If an edge sticks out, you can go back in and refold it. Some of them that are taller are taller because there's two pages kind of glued together um, at the spine. And so that takes up a little room and you cannot fold it any further down because it you're all the way down as far as you can go. So, and if it really bothers you that it sticks up a little bit, you could always cut a little bit off the bottom of the page here so that you can fold it a little further so that it's exactly in line with everything else. That does not bother me. Once I start, and again, I'm leaving this corner out, sliding it back as far as it will go, and then sliding it over. And I know I'm there, because the further you get, the more it kind of binds. And, um, you know, you might think you're there and you're not. Okay, so now I'm on my last page. And again, remember I said I don't like that gold. And this last page I did look, does not have any writing on it, but it does here. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that page out and I'm just going to rip it. I could cut it out, but I'm going to glue it back in and you're not going to see this ripped edge anyways, but I'm just going to glue that there so that both of my covers are the same cream color and I don't have to see that gold. So I'm going to put that in there and yeah, I'm going to use this so I can spread it out. And you know, I don't know where I put the credit cards I was using last week. I put them away. You know, it's just terrible. I put things away and then I can't find it. If I just leave it all out, I'm good to go. Okay. But I'm going to take this. I'm just going to put glue on this side, making sure that I get the front section and both edges really well. What's back underneath is not going to get any kind of, um, it's not going to be moved or anything, so it's not going to make that much of a difference if it has much glue on it. But definitely this front section and the edges, I want to get really well. And I can put a little bit back here just to hold it. But why waste too much glue if I don't need it? So, and again, we're just going to make sure that we spread it all the way out to the edge so that that edge catches and glues down really well. And then this may be the tricky part is getting it under there and getting it lined up. Kind of look at the edge of my gold colored page here. Line it up with this edge. <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. And this is why I like glue spreaders because if I had used a glue spreader, I would not have this glue all over my hand and it would be much easier for me to take care of this. <coughs> Excuse me. Great, now I'm gonna get a tickle. <coughs> so there we go. And now I need to get some water and wash this off my hand. <coughs> Sorry for the coughing. It's just a tickle. And I didn't bring anything with me to <clears throat> try and make it go away. So, and now that, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Our internet is worse than it's ever been. And so, I'm going to use this just piece of cardboard here to really smooth that out. So, but yeah, I've been uploading my videos with my phone service. I've always done my videos with my phone, but then normally I would upload them to my computer and I could glue two pieces together um, and then just upload it from my video, but then, or upload it from my computer, but my computer is attached to the internet and our internet just is not working very well. Sorry about that. I wanted to grab a piece of, this is not parchment, it's deli paper. But I need to cover up that glue so we can move on. So there we go. So now I've glued that on. So now that I have the same color on both sides, that makes me happy. Now we have this extra piece actually... This was a library book, and so I am going to take the library card off here because I can use this in my journaling series um, or just in a journal that I'm working on, any of them, because they're fun to play with. You can also make these so easily yourself. It's a very easy fold, but I do like to have these originals that have like the book names and all the little stamps. I just think they're really fun. 
Reminds me of when I was younger, when everybody used to really go get things at the library. Not so much anymore. And I have glue on here and it's bothering me, so I am going to rub it off and kind of rub almost a hole in the paper. So let's leave that alone. We're gonna decorate it anyways. Okay, so then on this side, I want to glue this one too. Now that one is still attached to the book, so I don't need to worry about the back of it. I just want to get the side and the front. And I am going to just glue it down like that and use this piece of cardboard to kind of spread it around like you would use your credit card. And I will tell you, this a credit card would get this really nice and smooth. This piece, because it's kind of flimsy, it's really not not doing the best job. So keep those fake credit cards and gift cards and all those different things to use in your crafting because they do really work nice. Okay, so we have all of our pages folded and we have a place to decorate top and bottom. And what I want to do before I decorate, now the bottom doesn't matter. We could glue that down. You can leave it there. Um, I normally don't glue it down because by the time you do this, it's not going anywhere. Although, yeah, when we decorate it, I was going to say you could leave it and, um, but I'm going to put a little glue on it. You could just leave it and then if you want to tuck something under there that's private, you could do that. But um, then this might get all tattered. So we'll go ahead and we'll glue it down. That will keep it nice and smooth there. go okay so now what we're going to do is we are going to we're going to put a little bit of a pocket here at the top so I brought out an envelope that um it's just it's a little heavier than regular paper so I thought that that was good and we're going to use this to make our pocket so what we're going to do is we're just going to cut this. Okay, so the cut line is right there. Um, I'm going to cut it about as wide as what that flap is. I'm going to kind of start off the edge. I'm going to move it over just a little bit. And come back to the edge and then do it this way just so that the it doesn't catch the edge and you know start ripping it if you start in the middle if you've got something that you're not really sure how well it's going to cut because this is really heavy um then just don't start at the edge where you're going to get caught and because i've got this level here and then this level here and the little piece that's inside i just didn't want that to get caught all right so now i'm going to take this side because we need two of them and so I'm going to just put a little mark here. They don't have to be perfect size. Oops. Um, but you want them close. So if you just put a little mark there, then you'll know, you, you know, they're gonna be about close. So they'll open about the same amount. And then again, Let's see, there's my cut line. To me, I think that the cut line is over here in the middle because I had one once that was like that, but the cut line on this one is off the edge. So line that up there. Yeah, that looks good. And again, I'm gonna start in the middle and go that way and then lift it up. Come kind of back to about where I started and then go this way. There we go. No catching at all. Set that aside. Oh no, we're not gonna set that aside. Well, we can. We can use our scissors. Alrighty, so this is our top. So what we're going to do is we are going to just cut off, because we've got enough to cut, we're going to just cut off one end where all the foldy extra bits are. We don't want any of those anyway, so we'll use the, kind of the middle of it. And then we're going to put this in here, line it up with the bottom, and then just cut it right across the top. 
just like that. And we'll do the same with the other piece. That is, here it is. And it doesn't matter what color they are because you're really not going to see them anyways. So we're gonna do that and take off this extra bit that was on the inside. And I'm gonna line this one up with the bottom. And then just cut it across the top. Okay, so now the way that you want these so that when you pull on this, it will be glued to that, so you want that to open up. So remember the opening goes on the inside. If you were to put the opening on the outside, you glued it to the book, you glued it to the front, and then you went to open it, it really would not open very well. This side out here, you could get to pull open, but this would be glued tight against this fold, and you would not get it open at all. So remember, the fold is on the outside, the opening is on the inside. And then we're just gonna glue that down. Before we do that, let's let's put a little, um, I don't know what you call it. Yeah, let's put a little mark on here. About in the middle. And oh, that's a little bit too much, I think. Put a little thumb hole in here. There we go. Even that's quite big, but that's okay. And we'll just cut around that. And see, because I did not use my credit cards to really smooth that out, I can see lumpy, lumpy spots either where the glue was or where the glue wasn't. And you know, both of those will make spots that show up because if there's no glue, the paper doesn't glue down there. You know, you. <laughs> whenever I am cutting on these videos, sometimes I feel like it looks like I don't have any idea how to use a pair of scissors. There we go. Okay. And now we see that orange. That there, that what color is that really? Gold. It's gonna get me one way or the other. Okay, so we're just gonna put glue on here. And for this one, I am gonna just use that poster glue. <coughs> Excuse me. Um because it grabs quicker. And it does hold well enough. It holds very well. The way I said that, it sounds like it doesn't hold very well, but it does hold very well. It's just not real spreadable. <clears throat> but this will, um, this doesn't have to be spread. It's gonna hold. Remembering that the opening goes to the inside. That's what, I have to always remind myself of that because for some reason in my head, I think that that opening should go towards the outside. Line it up with that gold paper, just like that, and give it a good press. And always make sure that you always give things a good press. If you have a chance to hold them down, weight them down a little bit, that's really good. It makes them stronger. And then let's do this one, and then let's open it up to make sure that we have not glued it shut there on the edges. But you do want to get that glue right out to the edge of your paper, even if it's going to squeeze out a little bit because you want that to be held down so when you put stuff in your pockets, it doesn't get tucked into that or rip that. So again, this one we've already glued down the, you could also glue them to the front and then glue them to the back. So that you don't have to slide that one in there, but it slid in there just fine. Give that a really good press. And there we go. So now we're going to have 
in the back of our Rolodex, we will have this little pocket. And it is not a deep pocket. Now, if you want to, you can make more folds um, so that it will open more. I find that for my Rolodexes, I don't need a great big gap. I have a Rolodex that has one that has a big gap, but I'm never going to stick that much in there. And so, you know, just the one fold that just give me an area so that I can slide some papers down in there. Usually I put my taller papers in there. Um, that is plenty for me. But if you accordion fold it a few times and go make two of these mountains and then glue it on the same way, except glue one of the mountains there and one of the mountains there, it will open much further. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got that. Now it's just a matter of decorating it up a little bit. And I like to get a little bit of color on the edge of my pages. So I brought some, let's see, I have some brown and some blue. Those are my favorite colors to use for a lot of different things. And so I, oh, here it is. I was going to say, I knew I brought out some um, paint palettes. So I just want just a drop of blue. And we can do the brown even next. And a little bit of water, just some water in the hairspray bottle. Alrighty, and our sponges, here we go. One of the sponges, and then just mix that all together. You could mix it with one of your paintbrushes or anything like that so that it doesn't all soak up into the sponge like this. But this is just going to be kind of very random. Just because that's the way that I really like to do this. You don't want those edges just being so, like, just plain. But they are kind of pretty with all the little bits of the words. You have all the little black marks. Just lift it up a bit so that you don't, I don't want to get it on the back right now. There we go. And then just a touch of brown. And you can wear, I brought the gloves out. You can wear your gloves so that you don't get the paint all over your hands. It doesn't bother me. I've always been ever since I was a kid. I've always loved to do things like with my hands. I, I like to feel it. I like to finger, when I was a kid, I loved to finger paint and, you know, just model clay and that type of stuff. I just loved touching the product. I don't know why. Probably not good for me. I'm not telling you to do that because you probably shouldn't. And I think I'm going to need a little more brown than what I have. I'm just going to kind of go over the blue even to knock that color back just a touch. And kind of blend them together a little bit. There we go. And I definitely need a little more brown. And for next, ooh, that's too much, but maybe we'll need it. Um, for next week, we're not going to have a shopping list. We'll just see what next week brings. We will just use what we have in our stash. If I get a chance to do one for next week, because I have not had a chance to get to the store. And I do do this. Oh, I got a big dark spot there. Um, I do this with the book open because, and I am going to make mine not totally open like this. I'm going to close it when I'm done halfway. And so, uh, but I do it open. And then when you shut it, it does make your color show up even more. And I thought I had too much, but I did not. Although if I press on the sponge, it's really coming out quite a bit. And if you're using acrylic paint like this and you do get a big splotch of paint, that splotch of paint may glue your pages together if you tighten them up. So just kind of watch that spot. Give it a chance to dry a little bit. 
and of course you will be able to still separate it. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got some color on our pages. I just really like to do that and just give it a little interest and I try and use something that's going to match what I've decided to put on it. Now really, I probably should have used more like brown and orange because my rub-ons and my um, stickers are like brown and orange and green. But I like the blue, so that's what I went with. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so now we just need to decorate. We need to remember that it's going to go like this. So this will be facing us, and this will be down on our desk. So we just need to decide what do we want to put down there. Do we want to put some ribbon down there? We can do, you know, all sorts of things. You can put colored paper down there. You could stamp or stencil. Um, I kind of thought I had brought out my... I thought I brought up my little dot stamps, but I guess I didn't. I really like to stencil, so I am going to... I'm going to take this piece of cardboard and make a stencil really quick. Very, very random. I fold this in half. Yeah, that worked good. I've never done that before, but that worked out good. And if you make a stencil like this and you've got a spot that you really don't like because you couldn't get, you couldn't reach there, um, when you're stenciling, just go ahead and, you know, use your stencil and then wherever that spot is on your paper, just move the stencil and grab a couple of little dots from that spot. Let's see how much we actually have on our sponges. Ooh, a lot still. I'll use a little blue and a little brown. And then I usually kind of lift and see if I like the way that it looks and get a little bit more. Because this is um, cardboard, so it's a little thicker, you actually have to press down a little bit more to get through that hole and get your whole circle. Otherwise, you might only just get parts of the middle of the circle or almost no circle. There we go. I like the way that that's looking. Get some right up here. And I think that that will be enough. Need some blue right here. And again, when you're stenciling, straight up and down is the best way to stencil so you don't smear stuff around under your stencil. Um, but also, don't you don't have to do that quickly. I don't know why I do that. I always have. But it's better to press and lift. Like, don't do it so fast because then you're like, you're missing spots and you have to go back in and do it anyways. There we go. Okay. A little extra messy. Messier than I normally like it, but it's just the way it wound up. And I'm not going to change it now. If I really hated it, I could go in and glue another piece of paper on top of there. There's never anything that you really can't fix. You can always do something to fix it. And actually, this is that spot where I peeled the paper off. There. Okay, we've got some color on there now. So now let's see what we have here. I want to do anything at the do I want to do some stenciling at the top I may want to do and now I may rub it because there's not much here 
I'm rubbing it very lightly, making sure that I am getting through. And I'm just, I think, just going to use the brown up here. I like that. And again, very, very lightly, but there's there's pretty much not much on here, so I don't have a great chance of smearing it underneath the stencil. And if you think you have smeared it under your stencil, make sure when you pick it up, wipe the back of that stencil off before you use it again, or when you set it down, you are going to get what's ever on the back of that stencil on whatever you're stenciling. There we go, and I am gonna put a little bit on my gold paper that I don't like. There we go. That one didn't have enough on it, neither did that one, or that one, or that one. And I want one right there. There, okay, I do, oops. I think I want a couple over here too. There, that looks good to me. Now, I really like this welcome sunshine here across the bottom. The bike is cute. And I think I should wipe the paint off my hands a little bit. before I go any further and start smearing that all over the place. It's good to have something that you can wipe your hands on, whether it's baby wipes, whether it's a towel so you're not throwing things away. I always forget to take care of my towels and um, so I tend to use paper towel, which you know I'm sure that towels would be better. But now when you're using a stencil or a uh, rub-on, and you're not going to use the whole thing, the best way to do it is leave it together and then cut out what you're going to use um, just trying to think, I might want to go ahead and put that bike on there I think it'll kind of blend into the brown on the background so I don't think that that's going to it's not going to be super in your face but cut out what you want, so then you're not getting part of other things that you don't want, and also you're not losing anything that you may wanna use whole later on. Like I'm going to cut around the seat of this bike and around the uh, leaf of this rose because I may want to use that rose and I would want that leaf on there. So this way I'm not going to lose any of the rows and the only thing that's going to come off is the picture. Not like the, the shape that you cut or anything like that, but now I have that rose that I can have the whole thing. And I think, yeah, I think I want to put this. So is it coming? because it's before, or is it going? I think we want it coming, so we're gonna put it right there. And then you're just going to take the rub on. I'm gonna set it there, make sure that my book goes down, so make sure that I'm above where my folds are. Put that on there, and then give it a good rub. It almost feels like a sticker. Is it a sticker and they just called it a rub-on? No, it's a rub-on. Rub-ons are really cool. You know, I used them when I was a kid, and then I didn't see them for a really long, long time. And I forgot how great they are. The biggest thing is make sure that you get the whole thing. You can use a popsicle stick to do this. Um, you can use anything. You could use the bottom of your jar like this. It doesn't matter. I just usually do it with my hand like this if I can, if I have nails at the time, um, because then I can kind of see where I'm rubbing, because you don't need to rub all the clear spots. You can. It doesn't hurt anything. 
but you do need to make sure that you rub all the places where the picture is so that, that picture is going to come off and stay. And this spike is going to kind of blend into those dots, especially since I did them brown and the bike is brown. But that's okay because I wanted the bike a little more in the background because I didn't love it, love it like, oh, I want to be able to definitely see this. Now, I think we've got it. I think we've got it all. And so the biggest thing is now when you remove a rub on, do it slowly. Because as you're removing it, if you find, as you remove this, the part that comes up should be completely clear. So as you're removing it, if you find a spot that's dark, like right here, part of that W did not come off. So I'm going to rub that, put it back down, and rub it. And now that part that was stuck to the plastic was is gone. But like I said, take it slow. Part of this is still not... Because when you rub it, you may miss something, even if you use a popsicle stick or something that's larger. So just take it off slow. Keep an eye on your plastic. And as you see something that needs to be rubbed harder, do it right away. Don't wait till the end, because if you accidentally take the whole thing off, um, then you're not going to get it lined back up exactly. We need some right here. Okay. Part of the tire right there. And there we go. So see now we are pretty clear. And there is our bike and our welcome sunshine right on our paper. So now you don't want to rub on that, especially like right away, don't rub on it because it could still be a little bit loose. Give it a chance to just kind of adhere there. So now we have to decide what do we, what else do we want on there? Okay. I like the joy. Not sh yes, I do think I want it right there. I wasn't sure if I wanted it at the top or not. Now I could put like this on there also I would only get it up to there but I don't want it so I'm going to cut around the joy and I don't want most of that part of the jar on there so that I am going to cut off so even though there is a swoop here I could try and go in there and cut that out, but I'm not going to bother with that. I like the little bit of rose that's there. Okay, so that looks good. And then where do I want to put it? Maybe over here with a butterfly in the middle. And so that's a thing. Just play around with it um, when you pick up your stickers and your and your decals, what do you call these, rub-ons. Um, just kind of try and make sure that they kind of match each other, you know, color-wise or whatever, or theme-wise, that they kind of go together. But if you want it to be very eclectic and just a whole bunch of whatevers, go ahead and do that too. Yeah, see, I should have done brown and green. This green is a very pretty color. Although my green is more of a lime green, I think. But I could have mixed a green too to kind of match. Okay, I think that we have got the whole thing. So we'll slowly lift it off and see. Now, part of that swoosh kind of stuck to the car, to the plastic, I'm going to leave it there. And actually, had I not rubbed on that, it really wouldn't have, it wouldn't have stuck either, even if I didn't cut it off. So there we go. I don't know why I press on them. You don't need to. Um, and now I do it. There we go. 
So we just had that little bit of swoosh right there that kind of didn't come off. So I like that, and I think I want a butterfly right there. Now I just have to decide which butterfly I want. Do I want a big one? I really do think I want a big one. And I think I like this one because it's got the green. It's got a little bit of blue in it. And a couple of those smaller ones have a little bit of blue in them. So they may help my bottom bit a little bit. So I am just going to take this. Yep, that looks like a good spot. Okay. So there we go. And now I think we actually need just a little bit more dots right here. Maybe, maybe not. Yes, I think we do. You know, you don't have to have every little bit filled in and there are days when I'm really good with leaving parts not filled in and days where I just kind of can't do it. There we go. That does that does add to it. Yeah, I like that. So there we go. There is our top. That is complete. So when it sits on our desk, it will sit like this. And that's what we will see face on like that. And then we'll just need to do something to the bottom. Let's double check our little pocket and make sure that it's still not stuck down. That looks good. That looks good. And this is the type, you know, like thing that I would put something like this tall. That's what I stick in my pockets. So because I really don't want those, even with that there, I don't really want to stick them way out there. So that's what I use the pocket for. And if you put in anything that might get lost, take a piece of paper, really more like cardstock, and fold it. Well, basically fold it like this. So when you you, you can stick whatever you want in there, even if it's small. And um, we'll stick this in here. So see, if that got to the bottom of that pocket, it'd be hard to get out. But if you put it in something like this, I call it a puller, um, but you put that in there like that. So then when you want it, you pull this out and that comes with it because it gets pulled out by your little pulling piece right there. So there we go. And as far as the bottom goes, I don't know that I'm going to mess with that right now um, because... not sure what I want to do with it and there's one other thing that I wanted to show you too when we're getting close on time so I'll think about what I want to put on there maybe some of this bling I'm not happy with my dots I might paint over that or put a piece of oh a piece of fabric that's what I think I want I think I want a piece of fabric on there okay so you can see the dots through the fabric, but just barely. And um, that fabric covers up just how messy they are. Something like that. With a bit of this bling on it. And I don't think I like that bling. I think maybe like some lace. A little bit of lace and maybe a few kind of put that like that might even let that hang over the edge just a little bit cuz it can be tatty and then i have some of these stickers and maybe a couple of these stickers in a couple of spots on here these don't have the right colors for me this is just a little bit too it's just not the right colors. The pink and the purple and the pink is so bright. So even though I thought I might like that on there, I do not. 
So I think that I'm going to put that on there like that. And we're already at 45 minutes, so I'm just going to do that. It's just so you know what I'm going to do. That's it. I'm going to glue it down, glue it down, glue it down, and put a few stickers on top. And then I will probably put a butterfly in the middle, and it will be one of the smaller butterflies. Okay. But, and if I remember, I'll try and remember to show it to you next week. But the one thing I wanted to show you is if you want one that's going to sit up like this, you can just sit it against the wall, you know, like the wall on your desk or whatever, and then that will hold it up. But you also, what I like to do is I put a piece of ribbon from the back to the bottom just to hold it where I want it. And so, let's see what colors we have here. What color ribbons? Ooh, this is a cream ribbon. This is a very... This will go very nicely. I like this color. This is one of them that I got when we bought the three ribbons and then I never used them. Oh, I think it was when we were doing the weaving. Okay. And I will definitely try and remember to show you this when we come back because this is going to have to dry. And the way that I do it is I'm going to take my ribbon I'm gonna put it where I want it, which I normally put it just around where the, I don't really want it way up here because um, I don't want things catching on it. So I normally stick it right at about the top of, I'm gonna put it right here. And I'm gonna put it on a bit of an angle so that I can come down here and do the bottom. But what I always, I always do is I will do the back and then um, after it's dry, then I will do the bottom. And I think I don't have our little um, clips here, our little, what do you call them? Clothespins. But I will stick a clothespin on that and let it dry. And then do the other. Now, I don't do anything with the back or the bottom because on my desk, you don't see them. If you're gonna have it sitting in the middle of somewhere, um, where you're going to see the back. You obviously won't see the bottom, but if you're going to do one that stands up like this and you're going to see the back, then um, you can decorate the back also. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to just put it at a bit of an angle here just so that when I do the bottom, it will be at an angle instead of like straight. And then you kind of, if it was straight, then you'd have to like turn it to make it go down here. So there we go, there's our angle. And then I'm gonna put one just like, it. I always leave them a little bit long, that's actually a little too much too long, but I'm gonna get a piece of parchment and I am going to um, use one of our clothespins on there. And then when I do the other side, I just try, I can set it right up on itself. Um, I try and get about the same distance and about the same angle. Now, if you're picky, you can measure. Measure from the bottom up to where this is and make sure that you get it the same. And you wanna have a good about an inch or something up there. So I just look at those and say, hmm, they look about right. They're going to work. Close this up, hold that there, and see that that angle will actually come down to this side. It will. When this is all together and it's sitting up, you won't see both sides at the same time. So, so long as this is at an angle where I can go ahead and glue it down here without it being all messed up, um, that's good with me. If it's not exactly the same, they are close, and that is good enough for me. So there we go. There is today's project. And I hope that if you make one of these that you enjoy it. I really do like these, and I like using them. Um, as a matter of fact, I do have one right now that I'm not using, and I have one that is way over full. So, but I, I hope that you have fun with this. It is a nice, easy project. You don't need a lot of anything. And, you know, if you don't have stickers or anything, you can paint it. You can glue stuff to it, glue buttons on it glue 
pictures from magazines on it. You don't really have to have a whole lot of anything to do this. And so um, I really do like this project and it's a very useful project. Again, I use it to stick like, like when I have ideas. I've got one that I stick ideas in. I have one that I stick quotes in that I might want to put on something or if I'm working on something, I put some of the things that I'm doing um, in one of these. So thank you very much for stopping by. We'll just wing it next time that I come back. I may not be back next week, but I will be back the week after if I'm not back next week. So thank you so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. And I hope that you all have an outstanding day. Bye-bye.